Excuse me. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? First things first, this is one of those games that you don't want to try and rush through. You just kind of want to be patient through some of the areas and some of the enemies. Like I'm going to demonstrate in the beginning here. For enemies that are charging towards you and whatnot, it's best just to stand in place and try to punch them as opposed to like going charging forward with your punches. Right here, I try charging forward while punching and I take a hit. Those mobile trackers, those little spike scooter things, you can punch standing up, you don't have to duck down. Pretty much for this first level, you just kind of want to be patient, kill all the enemies that come on the screen, stockpile your weapons up, so just use your fists. Wait for an opening with those flamethrower guys. The guys on this level that charge at you only take one hit. But here they take two for the rest of the entire game. To avoid those mines you can either jump away from them when they come at you. Jump over them. Or if you time it right, you can just jump in the air. I'm going to take a shortcut right here. Fall on the platform and jump immediately to get over him. Once again, be patient throughout this part. I'm going to fall back down here so I can take these enemies on one at a time. I'm use my batarangs here. Keep charging forward so he doesn't get on the other side of you. This guy's easy. Just jump up here and batarang him before he can get a shot off. Walk off this platform, go up to this guy and immediately punch him before he starts attacking. Otherwise it's going to be bad news for you. Here I'm going to demonstrate the speed between the NES Max and the speed that you can get by just tapping the button. As you can see you're a lot faster tapping the button than using an NES Max or like an FC Twin controller. One of those reproduction double console things that are out. For here, when he dives at you, just throw your battering at him. When he throws fireballs on the left side of the screen, move Batman all the way to the left. Now we're going to begin level 2 which has my favorite music in the entire game. These guys are pretty slow so you can usually attack them before they even can get a hit off. Watch out for the dripping slime there. I'm going to take another shortcut here. Use my battering to kill him. So I don't have to risk taking a hit. Which is pretty much my strategy. If I can take him out using my fists 
and not have to worry about getting hit, I will. But if I'm worried about taking a hit, then I'll use the battering. For there, just wall jump at the very top of that platform so you can get the most height out, out of your jump so you can make it. Be patient right there. Another straightforward level, pretty much. We're going to take another shortcut right here. Wall jump away from him. Battering him before he can hit you. Jump on this platform. Punch him. Punch him. Now this part, they kind of introduce you to the wall jumping a little bit. Try to get you used to it. Just make little light jumps back and forth. It's also good to go back down that and try to do it again so you can get used to the wall jumping. Again, just little light jumps to make it through this section. Jump at the bottom of that platform. We have another one of those jumps coming up, but wait here on the top of this platform until that enemy touches the pit. For this part, I just hit three of these bombs, so then they stop spa spawning bombs, and then I jump over that. It buys me extra time to get through that part. So I don't have to worry about the claw droppers dropping the bombs. For this part, I get on the edge of the screen where I can see that enemy fire. I go for it when he fires, and then I make the jump when he quits firing. Fall down that platform, don't jump. You can control where you land if you just walk off the platform. If you jump and try to go left or right, you'll just stall Batman and his jump. Wait for that mobile tracker to hit the edge, then make the jump. Duck down here so you can hit this guy, and pause so you can hit the second guy. Alright, I'm going to use the harpoon gun. The first two sections of this boss battle, they take nine hits apiece with the harpoon gun. I'm using the harpoon gun to conserve energy because I'm going to need as much energy as I can get for the next level when they introduce to us the jaders, which are the werewolf looking creatures. And I'm going to need as many batterings as I possibly can get to get past that level. Walk up close to him and duck down so you avoid his shots and then just jump up with punches. Alright, my strategy for the Jaders is when I see them on the edge of the screen, I'll kind of toy with them so they jump at me and then I'll run backwards. So then if they do a long jump, they won't hit me. And then I'll immediately fire my batterings. Now if they do a long jump and you hit them with the batterings, they're going to jump over your head. And if you keep hitting them with batterings, they're just going to keep jumping back and forth over your head. Now if they do a short jump and you hit them with batterings, they're just going to jump up and down in place. You can't, I kind of get myself into a predicament here. Wait for him to be at the peak of his jump and then I'm going to go for it. That's probably one of the harder sections of the level. Wait for the mobile tracker to touch the edge, and then make your move. Fall towards the left. I'm going to make a long jump off this platform towards the left. Jump, and then jump again as soon as you hit the ground. Now for this part, you want to fall towards the very 
left of that edge of that platform so then when he jumps he's just gonna barely miss you I make a mistake here I try to jump over this guy when I should have punched him oh well can't be perfect more wall jumping fall down this ledge and then jump backwards back onto it use your batterings there because you don't want to get to the point where he starts firing his shots before you kill that mobile tracker Use your dirks here. So once again, you have another one of these machines. Just kind of wait for your opening. When he charges forward and fires that shot, wait. And then when he charges backwards and fires the shot after, then go for it. So you have the most room when you're firing your batterings. Another wall jumping section. Coming up to the top of this wall jumping section, I missed time one of my jumps. And you'll kind of see how precise you have to be on this. It's a little bit tricky. Here you want to, up here you want to walk to the edge of this. Wait for him to fire a shot. Wait a couple seconds. And then jump and then just charge forward. Alright. Since I have plenty of health, I'm just going to throw my batterings at him till he dies and just kind of like out life him, kind of outlast him. If you don't have enough health, or before you get to that wall jumping section, there's one of those claw droppers you can kind of farm for items. One of those things up there on the ceiling of this level. You can farm those things for items. So if you're only down to like two or three health before you get to that wall jumping section of the last level, farm that claw dropper for some health so you have enough to outlast the boss of that level. Here you want to kill these guys before you go on the platform and then kill three of these claws. There I just fell down on the platform. There is a definite way that you can get through that without taking a hit, but most of the time when I try it, I end up taking more than just one hit. Right there you kind of want to stall after, before you fall off that platform so you don't end up falling onto that enemy. Another Jader which is probably the worst enemy in this game because if he does pounce on you he's just gonna keep pouncing on you stay and punch him in the ankle so you don't have to risk getting hit when you jump up there more wall jumping. Use the dirks to get that mobile tracker right there.
Once again, I'm going to use the dirts to get him. Light jump because you don't want to touch the gears on the ceiling or on the floor. Now coming up here, this next jump is really, really hard. I only make it about 25% of the time, and in this run I actually made it. It's got to be perfect. you got to be at the very bottom of that wall there. Like that. But you can't do a long jump, because then you'll hit that claw dropper. Here you're just going to have to kind of watch my pattern. My best advice is... Wait for the claw dropper to drop his bomb before you go through the second section. Once again, kill three of these so they don't spawn any on top of you. There I kind of demonstrate that you can just jump straight up in the air and still avoid those explosions. I use the harpoon gun on this guy so I don't have to worry about timing my jumps. Coming up right here, I make a kind of a noob mistake and I slip off that platform. But don't worry, I'm going to make it up in a few seconds here when I get to the gear section coming up. On this gear section coming up, there's two ways you can go through it. You can go through it the hard way or the easy way. I'll be showing you guys the hard way, but the easy way is when you get up here on this platform right there to use your dirts to kill that mobile tracker so you can get on top of that platform and just kind of like jump on the top of those platforms and avoid the gears altogether. or if you got mad skills you can take the gears like I did kill him with the battering now on, when you jump on this first step he can't hit you while you're standing up now when he takes backs away and fires a shot and you're on the second step, you have to duck it. So I'll demonstrate it again here. First step, can't hit you while you're standing. Second step, duck when he fires the shot when he backs off. Here it's nice to use your dirks because you can hit three of them at a time or two of them at a time. For this section, what I recommend is just rushing through this part. Stall your jumps if you have to. For this boss, I like to go up here on this platform. Now these cubes won't fire unless they're exactly horizontally away from Batman's chest. So when you get onto that platform there, you want to kind of like stand there till he's almost horizontal with your chest, then duck so he doesn't fire a shot while you're standing there. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but it does work most of the time. Now I just pull out the harpoon gun and fire shots. If you get your rhythm down, you can do this without getting hit. He'll pass through you. Because when you hit enemies and they're blinking, you can pass through them. You, they kind of have like an invincibility type thing where you can still do damage to them, but they won't do damage to you. Which I'll be demonstrating on this level. Because it's really good to learn how to punch while you're making your jumps on the platforms with enemies. Because you can kind of stop them in their attack. Once again using the dirt so I can take these guys out. Jump to avoid the gear. I got really really good at this level because when you play this game and you're first trying to like learn how to beat the Joker and whatnot, if you die at the Joker 
and have to use a continue, you have to go all the way back and play this level again. So you get really good at this level of playing through this game. These guys will fire either once or fire twice in a row. They're kind of demonstrating jumping and hitting enemies around platforms. There for that section, I just take the, the one hit. I can make that jump, but usually if I fail it, I take extra damage more than just one hit. Like I'll take two. So I just take the one hit and not even risk it. Just be kind of patient. Once again, I'm just going to take the, the hit, be on with it. Fall back down, get better timing. If you know that you're not going to make that platform with him hitting you, fall back down. Same goes with those further below this section. If you're not for sure that you're going to make it without taking the hit, just fall back down and try again. Maybe you'll get a better time. For him, you kind of want to start off immediately with your batarangs and then duck because he's going to have a flurry of punches. And you can duck the punches. And then you can get him into this, which is just kind of like an endless loop of him throwing these fireballs. Now my strategy for the fireballs is, when he's close to you and he's going to throw the fireball, jump when, the fi when he raises his hand in the air. Now when he jumps back like that and he's going to throw a fireball, jump after he, re he releases the fireball, like immediately after. And then fire your batarangs on your way down from your jump. You should be able to beat him no problem. Now for the Joker, he's going to fire a shot immediately right away. Now he can either fire a shot at you, and then do some lightning, and then fire some more shots, but he'll at least fire three shots and then charge on the other side of the screen. The best is to use strategy is to use your fists. See how I'm kind of like staying in between the edge of his gun and him so I can avoid the shots and still get punches off and when he does his electricity attack turn your back towards him and make sure your back is on the edge of his gun and you should not be able to get hit just have patience and don't get too greedy with hitting him and you should be able to do fine Here's the ending cutscene, which I think is far superior than the prototypes. And this is my favorite part of the, the end, is they played the music that you hear after you're forced to using a continue in this game. And when you play through this game and you hear that, you're going to hear that song a lot throughout your playthroughs. And when you get to hear it here, well, after you killed the Joker, it's so satisfying. So that was my No Death playthrough of Batman for the NES. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. There's going to be more playthroughs coming up. I got Double Dragon. I actually have it already recorded, and I just got to put commentary to it. I got a no knockdown run of Tyson coming up, Mike Tyson's punch out, no death run of Ninja Gaiden for the NES coming up, and other various other games I'm working on. Well, until next time, everybody, this is Glenn from the 8-Bit Players saying so long.